Now, do you watch any live streams online? Do you watch any live streams on YouTube, on Twitch, on another platform? You've got lots of people live streaming gaming, uh, live streaming other things. I live stream spreadsheet development, Excel VBA development every Tuesday afternoon. But do you watch any live streams online? Now, I'm very interested in this in, at the moment because YouTube, of course, gives you the option to do live streams. And I'm seriously thinking about live streaming all of my videos videos and that's what the YouTube experts are saying that you should move towards live streaming all of your videos but when I do do a live stream I only get you know about 20 people coming in to watch the live stream and the channel has you know 25,000 plus subscribers so what do you think about live streaming maybe you like it maybe you don't like it maybe you'll prefer a traditional edited video I'm really interested in your view what live streams do you watch online I live stream on YouTube Tuesday afternoon UK time now, what are some alternatives to pivot tables? Now, first, we do have to acknowledge pivot tables are supremely powerful. They allow us to produce these incredibly sophisticated data analyses, but they're not for everybody. And there's various reasons not to do a pivot table. You know, some of my customers don't want to have to manipulate pivot tables themselves. Some people don't want to have the unpredictability of data tables when they can add rows and add columns uh, on their own. Now, there are some alternatives. I recommend data analysis formulae, and we have a series on the YouTube channel called Excel Data Analysis Formulae for Beginners. So here we're talking about formulae like uh, sum ifs, average ifs, and particularly the D sum formula, which is super powerful. So although pivot tables are great, there are alternatives. You can check some out on the YouTube channel. People often ask me, how can I improve my Excel skills? And I've got some standard answers. You know, you've got to get better at data analysis. You know, you can do visual basic programming. But the kind of honest answer has nothing to do with Excel. If you want to improve the impact of your spreadsheet modeling skills, you have to get better at understanding projects, managing projects, but also understanding organizations, understanding things like business strategy. This is because there's a great quote from management science, which is, it's better to do the right thing wrong than the wrong thing right, from somebody called Russell Acoff. And what he's saying is you can have the best spreadsheet, you know, really technical, all the best stuff, but if you're looking at the wrong parts of the business, or if your spreadsheet isn't aligned with the strategic objectives or in a growth area in the industry, it doesn't matter how good the spreadsheet is. So think about getting better at managing projects and improving your understanding of strategy to get better at Excel. Under the hashtag YTD data analysis, I'm creating some videos to help people who don't know anything about data analysis to learn the basic ideas. It's gonna help you interact with data and analysts, people like me. So today, predictive versus descriptive models. All Excel spreadsheets, models at least, fall into one of these two categories. They're either descriptive or predictive. A descriptive model describes how things are now or how things have been. For example, historical sales data for your company. That's we could call a descriptive. Now, predictive models are more interesting. Here we're thinking about what's going to happen in the future. Your sales forecast, if you have one, is a predictive model. There's lots of interesting techniques. We have a video Video called Generate Random Data in Excel that uses random numbers and some other cool things to generate a predictive model. So we have descriptive predictive models. There's a video about predictive models on the YouTube channel. Now, should you be using Excel or should you be using another piece of software? There's lots of alternatives out there. They're regularly promoted on the internet platforms like LinkedIn. So should you be using Excel? Now, of course, I run a company that promotes Excel, so I have to declare that at the beginning I have a vested interest, but there's only two reasons why you shouldn't be using Excel in my view. One is you have a super large data set. That means more than 500,000 rows. Excel's gonna struggle with huge data sets like that. The other reason is you're doing a lot of remote working. So multiple people who are geographically separated in different places want to use the file at the same time. So they're the only two reasons. Often people think I need something else apart from Excel, but they're actually just not getting enough out of Excel. So obviously I'm going to send you to my YouTube channel. You can learn how to get more out of Excel there. Good luck. 
Now you're probably thinking about Excel the wrong way, but don't worry, this is a totally natural mistake. And certainly when I started Excel, I was thinking about it this way. The way to think about Excel is as a network of interactions. With Excel, so much is hidden underneath the surface. We can just have numbers in a grid, in a spreadsheet, we can't see the relationships between those numbers. They can be linked by formally, they can be linked by visual basic coding, and this creates the powerful mechanisms, the functionality that we associate with Excel. So you've got to try and shift your mindset. Think about Excel as a network of interactions. How can you see those interactions? Well, you can just click on a cell and see the formula and see the cells it's interacting with. You can see the dependencies in Excel. You can also get stuck into the Visual Basic Editor if you have some coding. Think about a spreadsheet as a network of interactions. It's gonna help you. You've probably heard people talking about Excel models. But what do we mean by a model? It's one of those words in business that people use all the time, but people don't take the time to really check that other people are understanding the same thing. It's one of those probably overused business words. So a model in Excel has to consist of input, process, and output. Those three things, input, process, and output. And I want you to create a model in your spreadsheet now. Just have one cell with a value in, put a number in, then put a simple calculation in another cell. You've created a model there. A model has an input cell that you put a value in, has some calculations, usually a formula, and it has an output, which is what you're interested in, which is also formula driven. So any Excel model consists of input, process, and output. Good luck.